So the label, that does work better, doesn't it? <laughs> the label matters. Um, and it matters given the raft of counter-terrorist legislation that's been passed in all our countries. Being labeled a terrorist has serious legal ramifications. By the way, the, the definition of terrorism in the US legal code is as follows. Premeditated, politically motivated violence perpetrated against non-combatant targets by subnational groups or clandestine agents usually intended to influence an audience. I'll come back to that in a minute. For my part, I tend to, th to prefer to think of terrorism as having six crucial characteristics. The first is political. If the act is not politically inspired, it's not terrorism. It doesn't make it better or worse. It's a crime, but not terrorism. If it's not violent or it doesn't involve the threat of violence, we shouldn't label it terrorism either. Terrorist acts are symbolic. Terrorists are invariably both outmanned and outgunned by their opponents. So they use symbolic targets to enhance the psycholo uh, psychological impact of the act. Fourth, terrorism isn't violence for the sake of it. And it isn't even violence in the expectation of defeating the enemy, but rather violence to communicate a political message. The fifth crucial characteristic is that the victims of the terrorists and the audience they're trying to influence are not the same. So that's pretty unusual. Usually if you kill somebody, it's because you want to kill them. But actually, terrorists are just using their victims to communicate a message uh, to influence somebody else, usually a government. And finally, uh, of course, the most critical definition or characteristic of terrorists is the deliberate targeting of non-combatants. So terrorists elevate the practices seen as the excesses of warfare into standard practice, deliberately targeting civilians. So terrorism then, it's the means that are used, not the ends that are pursued, that determines whether a group is a terrorist group. And many terrorist groups, I would argue, have actually been fighting for ends that many of us would consider just. It doesn't matter whether their ends are just, if the means they use to achieve those ends involve deliberately targeting non-combatants to communicate a political message, we shouldn't be shy about calling them terrorists. So terrorism then is a tactic. It's a tactic used by many different groups in many parts of the world in pursuit of a range of different objectives. So my own view is that it makes no more sense to declare war on the tactic of terrorism, much less on the emotion of terror, than on any other tactic or emotion. So, April 20th, 1999, two young men, one a leader, one a follower, uh, armed with guns and homemade explosives, killed 13 people and themselves in Columbine High School. Was this terrorism? Certainly everyone in that school that day was terrified. No, it wasn't. They had no political motive. That was called a, sh a school shooting or a mass shooting. Last July, in Aurora, Colorado, James Holmes, dressed as the Joker, opened fire in a cinema during the midnight screening of The Dark Knight. He murdered 12, injured 58. Was that terrorism? Everyone in that cinema was certainly terrified. But he had, no it wasn't, he had no political motive. Last December, in Newtown, Connecticut, in an attack that stunned the world, though it didn't stun American legislators enough to, to introduce gun control, the mind boggles at what it would take, um, Adam Lanza opened fire on kindergartners at Sandy Hook Elementary School. He murdered 27 people, including 12 kindergartners. Was this terrorism? No doubt everyone in that school was terrified. No, there was no political motive. This was another mentally ill person acting alone, another mass school shooting. Two weeks ago in Boston on Patriots Day, two brothers, one a leader, one a follower, placed homemade explosives near the finishing line of the Boston Marathon. They killed three people and injured many more. But for the proximity of the Boston hospitals and the extraordinary skill of the first responders, large, the number of casualties would have been far greater. This act has been almost universally described by our political leaders, by our newspapers, indeed by almost all of us, as terrorism. But was it? What makes it so? There can be no doubt that the city was terrified. I spent most of my adult life in Boston. My husband and my daughters lived there. They're all runners. I can tell you, everyone in that city was terrified. 
But does that make it terrorism? On the day of the atrocity, President Obama spoke in very measured tones. He studiously avoided using the term terrorism and counseled against jumping to conclusions. But the next day, before the identity of the perpetrators was known, and under pressure from the press, he referred to the attack as an act of terrorism. I thought so too. The timing of the attack coming on Patriot's Day, which celebrates the opening of the Revolutionary Wars, coming 20 years to the week after the violent end of the Siege of Waco, coming 18 years to the week from the Oklahoma City bombing, I thought the timing suggested that this was terrorism. Once the Sarnayev brothers were caught, and in the case of the eldest killed, they were referred to by the president and by everybody else as terrorists. But were they? Let's think about those six crucial characteristics I mentioned. Yes, this was a violent act. Yes, they deliberately targeted non-combatants. It may have been symbolic, the Boston Marathon and that. The victims may, have been the, may not have been the audience, but if they weren't, who were? Was it an effort to communicate, but there was no communication of any message, political or otherwise? Was it political? There's no known political motive for this atrocity. Until we know whether there was a political motive to the Boston attack, we should not call it a terrorist act. Until we can demonstrate that this was, in the words of the US legal code, premeditated politically motivated violence intended to influence an audience, then this was not a terrorist act. This is not just a matter of semantics. The acceptance of the label terrorist enabled the extraordinary sight of American lawmakers demanding that an American citizen captured in an American city and charged with murdering Americans in America be labeled an enemy combatant. Fortunately, more reasonable minds prevailed in that instance. But this illustrates two of the iron laws of counter-terrorist legislation. One is that temporary counter-terrorist legislation is never temporary because politicians are always too scared to rescind it for fear of being labeled soft on terrorism. And secondly, counter-terrorist legislation once on the books will be used for non-terrorist cases. I think it's worth asking ourselves why. Why we were so quick to label this a terrorist act and not Columbine, not Aurora, and not Sandy Hook. No doubt the explanation lies in part in the fact that in the other cases, the perpetrators were found immediately. They were identified immediately. So there was no time for speculation and rumor mongering. The press, ever eager for hyperbole to boost circulation, had time to speculate about terrorists. The fact that the perpetrators had been born in a dodgy part of the world had boosted the idea that they were terrorists. They'd been called Chechens, but actually they'd been born in Dagestan, not Chechnya. And as the Chechen militants were very quick to point out, the enemy of the Chechens are Russia, not America. We can only hope that the fact that the Tsarnaev brothers are Muslims did not feed the assumption that they were terrorists. All the evidence on Jahar, the younger brother, suggests that he was apolitical, secular, pot-smoking, average 19-year-old. It may turn out that the Sarnayev brothers were terrorists, but we don't know that yet. The US authorities are spending a good deal of time trying and effort trying to establish what the motive might have been. Whatever evidence is provided, um, it's, it seems fairly clear that uh, whatever about the way in which the elder brother Tamerlan was radicalized, the two brothers acted alone in planning and executing the attack. Knockoff jihadis is what Vice President Biden calls them. But are knockoffs the real thing? I'm sure some of you have views on that. Terrorists generally have two types of motives. Primary political motives and immediate secondary motives. The primary motives differ with the different types of terrorist group. Autonomy, independence, secession, overthrowing capitalism, uh, bringing back the caliphate, overthrowing religious uh, secular law and replacing it with religious law. Terrorists have been singularly unsuccessful in achieving these political objectives. They've been much more successful in achieving the more immediate or secondary motives that they share with other mass murderers. So these, these other 
groups, these other motives are common to all terrorist groups, no matter what their ideological persuasion or where in the world they're operating. They're what I call the, the three R's, um, revenge, renown, and reaction. That, I think, is what terrorists want. Now, they want revenge for harm that's been done um, to them or a group with which they identify. They want renown or glory for themselves to redress the humiliation they believe themselves to have suffered. And they want a reaction. Terrorists are, are weak. They're outmanned and outgunned by their opponents. So they want to provoke a reaction. And the bigger reaction, the better. When the most powerful countries in the history of the world declare war on what was, after all, a motley collection of extremists operating under the sponsorship of one of the poorest countries in the planet, they elevate um, those extremists to a degree of which they could have only dreamt. The point of defensive warfare is to deny your opponent what he's seeking, but by declaring war on terrorism, we're granting them opportunities for revenge. We're granting them renown and reaction. Similarly, when politicians, press, and the public treat two twisted, murderous young men seeking only their own gratification as global terrorists, make their names and, famous, and faces famous the world over, surely we are conceding what they are looking for, for themselves rather than for a cause. Revenge, attention, and making a mark. In so doing, I fear we're increasing the likelihood that some other sick, twisted young men, and they are invariably young men, will opt to go out in a blaze of glory too and bring some other innocent children, ambitious, warm-hearted young women, and aspiring young police officers with them, like the four people who died in Boston. So let's use our criminal justice system for what it was designed to do. Let's not exaggerate the threats we face. Let's not call every misfit a terrorist. And not, let's not make heroes or anti-heroes out of mass murderers. Thank you.